Hi, I'm Tom Long. This week we're going to be walking on beautiful Yopon Beach in Brunswick County, North Carolina. And as we walk, we're going to be considering for this fifth Sunday of Easter, what I think is one of the most beautiful passages of Scripture in any of the epistles of the New Testament. We're going to be reading from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. And as we do that, I want you to listen and see if you agree with me that there are these significant lessons that we can take away. One, that love is rooted in what God has already done. And two, it's rooted in who God is. And three, it's rooted in what God is doing within us as his children, as members of his family. And then finally, how do we know whether or not we are living in God, living in Jesus Christ, living in the Spirit-filled life that, they, that, that God came to give us, the, the three persons of the one Godhead came to give us. So listen as we read, see if you agree, see if you think that's what this is saying, and see what lessons we might take away. So I'm going to begin reading from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7, as we walk. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent us. That he, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And then going on to verse 13, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who's, who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. So let's just break this down quickly. First, the love that we're talking about here is agape love. And we're talking about the action of love. And it's a unique word in the New Testament, and it is exemplified by God's love demonstrated for us because God sent his son to die for us. Jesus gave up his place in glory, became a human being, and gave his life on the cross to atone for our sins. And the Holy Spirit came to live in us to bring that life of God into our lives, to bring that love that God has and is into our lives. So God loved us, initiated with his love for us, 
it's because of who God is. John says God is love. And we as his children, as God's children, are called to love. That's who, that's who we're meant to be. And that love was described last week as love that is very, very much patterned after God's love for us. That is, when we see someone in need, we take from what blessings we have to give to meet that need, just as God gave his son to meet our need to have an atonement for our sins. That's who we are called to be as we dwell in Christ, as we abide in Christ, as we live in Christ. So how do we know that we're abiding in Christ, that we're living in Christ? We know from a few things here. Um, we know, John says, because we have seen and testify that the Father has sent a Son to be the Savior of the world. So to testify is, you know, to be a witness in court. <laughs> and in the United States right now, we're all very aware, aware of what it means to be a witness testifying in court and the importance of doing that truthfully and fully and honestly. Secondly, it's not just what we would say to others, but it says if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. So that, that word acknowledges means to say the same thing as to agree. If we agree with one another with what God has told us in his word, if we agree that Jesus is the Son of God, that's how we know that we live in him. But ultimately, we know that we live in him by the fact that we love our brothers and sisters. That's what this passage is saying. Yes, it's, it's what you testify about. Yes, it's what you confess with your lips. But it's more than that. It's demonstrated by the fact that you love your brothers and sisters. So, this being so important, how do we know whether or not that's who we are, whether we are living in Christ, abiding in Christ? Well, John tells us there's a couple ways we know that we're not abiding in Christ. One is that we might not have fear. Fear is a red flag. If you're living a life in fear, then you do not have the completeness of God's love in you because God's completed love, God's perfect love, casts out fear. Jesus says that he came to give us a peace that would replace our troubled spirits and would cast out all fear. And when we have that fear, we know that we don't have that peace, that love that God came to put into our hearts. Secondly, the second flag that's mentioned here in this passage is hate. Wow, the world is so full of hate today, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're going and looking at uh, Houthis versus uh, Jews or Republicans versus Democrats, the immigrants in England versus the people that have lived there for generations. There's hate in so many places around the world. And what John is saying here is, if you've got hate, then you ain't got God. <laughs> if you're hating someone, then you're not in the stream of what God is doing in this world because God loves that person. So the two flags are fear and hate. So finally, what do we do if we have that red flag? When, when we recognize that there is hate in our heart, that there is fear in our spirit, that we're troubled in that way, we're not secure in who God is and what he's doing. I, 
I think of it as being sort of like Peter when he stepped out of the boat and was walking on water, and then he took his eyes off of Jesus and started looking at the waves and he began to sink. When we reach that point where we take our eyes off of Jesus and who he has called us to be and the, the life that he is giving us with his Holy Spirit, when we take our eyes off of Jesus that way, then we sink into fear and into hate. And the, the resolution is, we need to get our eyes back on Jesus. So we confess that we have sinned. And we ask for him to fill us with his spirit so that we can live a life of love and peace. And then we love the way that John has been talking about, where we look for someone that we can help. We find a hurt and heal it or we find a need and fill it. We respond to what God has invited us to do and to be in that way. Now, would you mind joining me for a moment in prayer? Gracious and loving God, we come before you as branches seeking nourishment from Jesus, our true vine. Help us to abide in him so that we may bear abundant fruit that glorifies your name. May our lives reflect your love and grace to all around us. Amen. Lord, I want to love like Jesus in my heart, in my heart. Lord, I want to love like Jesus